Hi, this is Pastor Randy. Thank you so much for joining me for today's message, Making the Team, part of our Goal for the Gold series here at Cumberland. Our series theme verse is from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. Do you not know that in a race all runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. And I'll be sharing a lot of verses today about how we make the team, but I want to share one, just one more verse with you, and that's from John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. May the Lord bless us as we read his word and seek to do his will. Well, if you got a chance to listen to last week's sermon online, then you know that the Winter Olympics will begin February 4th in Beijing, China. Vicki and I had the opportunity to be there in 2008 when they were preparing for the Summer Olympics in Beijing. I know that a lot of preparation goes into the Olympic Games, but for the host city and the thousands of athletes who will come from all over the world to compete there, it's especially important to prepare. The prizes that the athletes seek is one of the highest honors any athlete can achieve. It's an Olympic gold medal. In this series, we are looking at how we Christians are going for the gold. And we're in it to win it, as we said last time. Do you not know, Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 9.24, that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize. Run in such a way as to get the prize. Do what it takes. Be in it to win it. And our prize is not just streets made out of gold, but the salvation of our souls and the opportunity to be welcomed into heaven by our Lord and Savior. Nothing's worth more than to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant, well done. Last week, we talked about how these athletes have God-given abilities that they have honed in order to become the top-notch athletes that they are. And as Christians, we have God-given abilities that we need to use for the common good and the glory of God. Today, we will focus on the first step for athletes who are going for the gold, and that is to make the team. The author of the book of Hebrews suggests this tip for making God's team in Hebrews 11, verses 1 and 6. Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. The first step to making the team is to believe, to have faith. If the athletes did not believe in the Olympic program and what it stands for and want to be a part of it, they would never do the training necessary or enter the trials required to make the team. As those seeking to be on God's team, we must believe in God and believe that God is good and being with God is our fondest wish and our highest aspiration. And yes, we must be prepared to go through some trials too. But one difference between Christians and Olympic athletes is the Olympic athlete seeks to make a team because they already suspect or hope that they are the best or the cream of the crop. We seek to make the team because we know just the opposite. We are not all that we should be. And left to our own resources and efforts, we shall never be all we should be. And our hope is that God will forgive us of those shortcomings and make us what we should be. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Paul wrote to the church at Rome, and the wages of sin are death. But the free gift of God is eternal life. And that's the message given by Peter in Acts chapter 2, verses 36 to 39. He says, God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. In John 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. And Luke records Peter saying in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Paul writes in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, and all the way to 13. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 
For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Our theme verse says we want to run as to get the prize because in a race only one gets the prize. But this is a different race that we're running in this team, this Christian team of ours, because everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. In a jail in the city of Philippi, Paul and Silas made such an impression on the other inmates with their faith and prayers and songs about the Lord that when an earthquake opened up a way of escape, none of them tried to get away. Luke records what happens in Acts chapter 6, verse 27. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. The first step to making the team, to making God's team, if you want to go for the gold, is to trust in Jesus Christ, to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But it's not enough, though, to just believe to make the team. It takes commitment. Someone who was chosen for the team that did not commit themselves to training, I'm talking about the Olympic team here now, would be replaced. They never had the heart of Olympian in the first place. And not every person who sits on the bench on Sunday morning is on God's team. They don't necessarily have the heart of Christ just because they sit in a church. Jesus said, not everyone who calls on me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father. Biblical belief is not just accepting something as true or real. It's a commitment to follow. Following is part of believing. Jesus didn't call his disciples back in the day by saying, believe in me. He said, follow me. And he still does. How do the Olympic athletes know that they've made the team? I know sometimes people say, how do I know if I'm a Christian? How do the Olympic athletes know if they're on the team? Well, they trust the authoritative word of those who are in the position to make that decision or announcement. As Christians, how do we know we're on the team? We trust God on the authority of his word. John writes in 1 John chapter 5, verse 9 to 13, Anyone who believes in the Son of God has this testimony in his heart. And this is the testimony God has given us, eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe. And remember that in the Bible, to believe means to be committed to follow. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. And that's what I want for you today. I want you to know that you have eternal life. I want you to know you're on the team. We have the trustworthiness of God's word to us. We can depend on him being faithful to his promises. It's not about how worthy or dependable we are. It's about his worthiness and his faithfulness. As Christians, besides the trustworthiness of God's word, we have also been given the Holy Spirit to confirm God's presence in our lives. It says in Romans chapter 8, verse 16, that the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Another evidence Olympians have of making the team is that their lives are changed. Life, at least temporarily, is not the same for the Olympic team member. Suddenly they find themselves before news microphones and reporters and paparazzi flashes. If they needed more proof that they had made the team, this surely must be it. And changed lives are also the proof of our relationship with God. Take, for example, Peter. A cowardly Peter who had once skulked around outside the house of Caiaphas while Jesus was being brutalized inside, who denied knowing Jesus three times, became the rock that his name suggests and boldly preached to thousands after the day of Pentecost. Even boldly declared that he would not help but preach about Jesus to the very council that had put Jesus to death. His life was changed. And the story is repeated time after time in the Bible. 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 to 6 says, We know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus walked. 
must walk as Jesus did. You want to be like him and live for him. That's the big change. In John chapter 14, verse 21, Jesus said, Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. One of the greatest joys of watching the Olympic trials is to see the reaction of those who made the team, the tears in their eyes, the lump in their throat. Many give praise to God for blessing them with this opportunity, and rightfully so. As we said last week, the very abilities that they have are a gift of God. And as Christians, we know that we are saved by grace, not by our works. It's a gift of God. And so we give praise to God for calling us in his grace and his mercy to be on his team as well. The Bible says there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 believers who do not need to repent. So my question for you today is, has heaven rejoiced over you? Have you made the team? Have you trusted in Jesus? Have you determined that you will follow him to walk as he walked, to be more and more like him? If so, welcome to the team. Now... Let's get busy training and getting ready. Let's roll up our sleeves. Let's go for the gold. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that everyone listening today who has not answered your call to come, to follow you, will hear and respond, that they will trust in you, that they will know that salvation is found in no other name than the name of Jesus, that they will trust in you and through your Holy Spirit become more and more like you. Until that day, we stand before you by the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining me today. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And may you know that you are a child of the King. Amen.